All right, so let's do this, Jesus. What's happening, man? We are ready for another social marketing hour, bro. Social marketing hour it is. And this time, yes. we're in our cigar lounge. Yes. The cigar lounge. This is the attention-grabbing cigar, cigar lounge. I like it. Attention-grabbing cigar lounge sounds like a good place to be. No, no, no. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding, all right? I think, I think it's literally against the law for us to turn on a cigar in here. Could be. I don't know the Florida law about that. Right. I know that there's cigar lounges out there that they probably have special rules and and regulations. But in our case, yeah, I wish we could. After we're gonna do business today, we're gonna educate people on the subject of email marketing, copyright, and all these other things. I like it. You know, fun fact. Obviously, this background here for those of you guys on the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, you're like, "Why are these guys talking about cigar lounge or whatever?" Well, guys, here's the reality. If you guys watch us on YouTube, if you watch this episode on a video, I have a giant green screen behind our table, and this green screen has a purpose. You can do crazy things with it, and that's why I wanted to just play around with it. At the end of the day, it's all about attention. That's true. So we are in the AGM Marketing Studios. That's right. We are in the attention grabbing studios and uh, we want to teach you guys about marketing today. And if you are only listening to it on podcast, that's fine. But you should really check out the video also because Manuel's got great hair. I've got a great beard and you guys are missing out on it if you're not watching it. That's an absolute straight fire fact right there. You guys got to check out Jesus's beard. All right. For sure. So Mr. Jesus Reveso. Sir. You're about to hit three years here at AGM Marketing. Pretty crazy. Which is amazing. Yep. Uh, it's also been amazing how much AGM has grown. Indeed. And I'm sure that for you to be a part of that journey and to contribute your your value along the way, probably been quite a ride also along the way. Absolutely. Uh, so just so you guys know, Jesus is uh, a very important part of our organization. Uh, he is the many things. I don't have one particular title that I can just say that that describes him. Uh, I have called him the head of marketing. I have called him the chief copywriter. I have called him the many different things. But regardless, he handles my email lines. He handles like the communication lines for the organization. He is responsible for taking my message and my compulsive talking <laughs> and turning it into something valuable that can help uh, people in the audience improve a particular area of their business. So Jesus, why don't we start by, I know you have an incredible story and I can say this, like there's one thing that I'm very passionate about is helping people create their own stories. Right. Even when they didn't even understand what their full potential was, helping them discover their potential is something that for me drives me every day. That's why at AGM Marketing, we don't even ask for resumes. We just say, come on in. If you have willingness, if you have passion, if you have dedication, if you have the desire to be better, you qualify for AGM. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your story and where you came from and how did you go get to this position of incredible power at AGM, which for us can't really visualize ourselves without you anymore. Tell us about that. First of all, that's kind of a mind boggling fact to hear. So I appreciate that. It's nice to be, you know, such an integral part of a organization like this. So my journey really started back in 2012. So as we're sitting here today, uh, September 2022. A decade ago. Yep. Wow. So I was at the time I was working in locally here in Florida as a check cashing guy, basically. Worked at a company. I worked the overnight shift. So from like 11 p.m. to about 7 a.m., it was me by myself in the building waiting for people to come by in the middle of the night to cash checks. Wow. <laughs> wow. And it wasn't fun. And then You I, had a lot of cash in your hands. So yeah. So self-defense, which again is something that you're passionate about, was important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go on. But uh, I had an opportunity that showed up because in the past I had also had a commercial driver's license and knew how to drive trucks. And so this opportunity came up to go to North Dakota and drive water trucks in the oil fields. Test driving the truck. Test driving the truck. I got the job because I could drive. Uh, but then I was on my own. So it was a very interesting and integral part of my turning points in my life at that time frame. So in that 20, I'm sorry, that was 2011, November 2011. So early 2012, I realized that if I was ever going to have some kind of control over my own life, especially if I wanted to run any type of martial arts or fitness schools or anything, I needed to understand how to sell and how to market. So in that early 2020, I started looking up information on marketing and sales. And that led me into Dan Kennedy's material. And I just started consuming. The legendary marketer. Absolutely. And one of the one of the best in the history of this world, for sure. Yep. 
eighty twenty rule and all that all that stuff, right? Yeah. Long story short, a couple about a year and a half later, I spent two winters in North Dakota, which I do not recommend you do, especially as a Florida born person. Driving trucks. Driving trucks. At night again. I was a night shift guy. This is like a eleven o'clock at night to six AM type of thing. Six to six. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, rough. Negative sixty degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Yeah. And when you're dealing with water, negative sixty is not fun. Absolutely not. <laughs> it's a weapon. The water becomes a weapon yeah. at that point. But uh, it was a short lived, like I said, about a year and a half. Came back home. Fast forward a few years. Uh, continued consuming marketing and sales information just to try to sharpen my own skills. During that time frame, I, I didn't have a spouse that was very supportive of things. So that was a big challenge to overcome. Got out of that, found a, uh, was with a person now who is very supportive. She's amazing. I love her. She's yeah. amazing. Full, yeah, just make it clear. <laughs> Jesus is an emotional guy. All right. I think it's a very rare conversation and that's, that's such a good sign. I mean, it, it's a, it's a great quality to be emotional. Because also you can see how grateful you are. And I'm telling you guys, the podcast listeners, it's hard to have a conversation with Jesus because <laughs> he's he's had such a, such an incredible life and his journey has been so full of downs and ups along the way that just to be in a position, I'm grateful. I'm an emotional yeah. guy too. Like I, sometimes I got to let it all sink in and it's incredible, right? Because when you fight enough and along the way you get lucky, quote unquote, which you know what my favorite quote is yeah. on that subject. Seneca. I think, I think people are tired of me, me <laughs> saying it. So what, what so is I'll the, sell it. So go when, ahead and say it, Jesus. When preparation meets opportunity, that's luck. That's right. A little bit of a paraphrase. That's right. And really, that's kind of what happened with me. So I was had a, a great new wife, but I was still driving trucks here in Florida. At that time, I was hauling gasoline and an 18-wheeler all around the state. The good thing was is I got to continue consuming marketing and sales content through audiobooks and podcasts and things like that. So, so while you were driving the trucks, you were getting yourself trained. Yep. That's amazing. What a great lesson yep. for anybody out there listening or, or watching this, like, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you continue to prepare yourself, then you can eventually get lucky. That is powerful right there, right? Absolutely. So then you kept on training and... Kept training. The goal was, uh, original goal was to work on creating my own agency so that I could basically freelance uh, and get out of the trucks. Thank God it didn't work out. Right, that's right, because it wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> but as luck would have it, preparation and opportunity, I looked at on, on Indeed one day, I think it was like a Thursday, and there was an ad for a Facebook media buyer or something like that from this company called AGM. I was like, well, I know how to do that. Let me, let me contact these guys and see what happens. So I, I filled out the application online. I, I had a phone call. I filled out the application on Indeed, and I think it was later that afternoon I got a, a phone call from Ernesto. Right, so. so. You were still driving trucks. I was still driving the trucks, right. yeah. Just getting trained on marketing, but still driving trucks. Yeah. And so Ernesto calling back says, you know, hey, this, this part looks good so far. He asked me a couple of questions. If you were going to set up an ad on a Facebook, how would you do it? And I was sort of like, well, first I would go to the business manager. And I think that sold him right there. He's like, this guy knows what a business manager is. Right. <laughs> That's already a check in the right box. Right. Uh, so the conversation evolved. He sent me some other material. I told him uh, when I went to the website, there was an opportunity for copywriting, yeah. which is what I really liked. Right. You know, Facebook buying is cool, but copywriting is like super cool. Right. You know, if you're a guy like me, but. Whatever that means. Well, it's a, it's a, <laughs> I, I believe it's a higher up skill. Yeah. I, I believe that any good marketer, any really good marketer is also a great copywriter. I totally believe that. Yeah. Because I really, I personally think the two are uh, inseparable. Well, like today I wrote a post and uh, I just got inspired. I woke up in the morning. I don't know if you saw my post. Uh, it was on Instagram. And you know, I don't write all my posts these days, especially right. because we, we post thousands of times, right? Yeah. So I have 250 employees to manage between two companies. So I don't get to just write content or do content all day long. Absolutely. But when I do write, I really get into it. And I get inspired and I think I'm the original copywriter. And as I'm putting together my book, yep. fun fact, I realized that I have written over 150,000 words myself. Wow. Average book is 60 to 70,000 words. Okay. So I have written already like several books over the several six years or so of my marketing career. I nice. really love copywriting and I believe it's it's just such an important part of, uh, you know, your marketing game. Yeah. If you don't really have marketing in place, if you don't have a good marketing system, usually copywriting is a big area that you're failing at. Yep. So I believe that's essential. So just this morning, I'm like, this is how it happened. I check my statistics every single day and I look at what's happening on the world of social media. And 
I'm always on top of everything. I'm always on. There's a switch that turned on way back when. I've never figured out how to turn it off. <laughs> so I wake up and I check it and I'm like, wow, I've been building YouTube stars for a long time. Like yeah. I have some incredible products in the area of YouTube channels, right? But now I logged into my YouTube channel to check out my statistics and I saw that for the first time ever, we did 1 million views nice. on our 28 day window on YouTube. That's incredible. Heck yeah. A million views of our content, right? So that's growing. That's in my, my channel, YouTube channel, Manuel Suarez. If you guys want to check it out, I would invite you to subscribe for sure. But then I got inspired. So copywriting starts with inspiration, right? Because yeah. a, a copywriter that's not inspired, that doesn't have the passion for what they do, usually is a terrible copywriter. Yeah. Right? Because you're, you're trying to like, it's, it's like the Jason Flatland formula, right? We talked about it the other day. Value plus sincerity mm -hmm. equals Ooh. success. Yeah. So if a copywriter is not being sincere and is making up why a product is good or why a service is good, it's not going to be good copy. Yeah. It's, it's, that's the reality. Like the better that you believe, the more that you believe in your own products and services, the more that you're going to be able to impact and be a great copywriter. Yeah. So I wrote my copy, right? I said, new milestone in my YouTube channel. Have you watched? One million views in the last 28 days. By the way, I didn't make any typos this time. Usually Ooh. I get one staff member that says, hey, you know, you got a typo. <laughs> so, so somebody says something like, uh, you guys are going to get in trouble with Manuel. And I'm like, oops, I'm the one that yeah. wrote that. See, so when, when an email goes out with typos, I'm just trying to emulate the original ninja. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, Jesus. I don't know about that. Okay. Uh, we'll tell a story. Uh, I thought about a story with you. We went over recently. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to it in a second. <laughs> but let me finish my copy. Uh, my motivation and my daily drive boils down to one word, impact. Mm. And I really mean it. I get goosebumps saying that, Jesus. I really do. And it makes me emotional about it because that's what drives me. Yeah. A paycheck, a check, a client closed, a major retainer, all those things are great. But what really drives me is somebody coming to me and saying, Manuel, look, I applied this and I saw success. My business was able to expand. I was able to help my employees do that or my family was struggling and now it's not struggling. Yeah. Impact. It really is. It wasn't always the case. Seven years ago, I needed money to survive. Right. Now I got abundance. So it's not about money anymore. It's about impact. And the people that are up there, the content unicorns of the world, the ones that are creating massive effects, it all boils down to that one thing. They want to create massive impact. So it says, and that's what I'm doing via my social media content. Fun fact, a YouTube view is not like any other platform. A YouTube view means someone watched your video for at least 30 seconds. For comparison purposes, a TikTok view is instant and a Facebook view is three seconds. These are not apples to apples. All right, that's it for now. I'll get back to working on my overnight success. Mm -hmm. Don't get, don't say I didn't warn you about the attention grabbing opportunities the world has to offer. Man, it drives me crazy. Yeah. People keep on watching content and they don't execute. Yeah. It drives me crazy. And then they go and complain and they talk about how social media doesn't work anymore or the algorithms or the economy or COVID or this thing. It just, it's insanity, man. Yeah. And I keep on riding the wave and taking advantage of opportunities. The reason why I'm mentioning that is that copywriting and talking about the value of copywriting and the importance of it is born from passion, right? Yeah. Like the reason why I love you so much, Jesus, and I appreciate you and I look for ways to help you grow along the way. And as the organization wins, I wanna make sure that you win is because you are passionate about that. And I love how I get on, on the stage and I talk to the staff and then the next thing I know, there's an email that goes out about what I talked about, duplicating exactly what I said. And that's passion. Yep. So that makes you a giant, right? Because you are really pushing this passion forward. And that's basically what copywriting really depends on, right? Yeah. That passion, that drive, that energy. I want to make a point of the hidden marketing and copywriting lesson that just happened as you were telling your story that seven years ago, you had a struggle just to pay the bills and now you have abundance. That's a super important piece to know when you're writing your copy and marketing is you have to know where the people are in their life and in their journey, especially how, as, how it relates to whatever it is that you're selling or offering. Because if seven years ago, I tried to offer you something now 
that that you would have no problem accepting now, no matter how much you would have wanted it, you could have been 100% committed, but you wouldn't have been able to take advantage of it. But maybe I would have something else that could have helped you at that point seven years ago to get a little bit further and a little bit further, just like you did for yourself. But if you don't understand the position that person who's going to be reading your, your copy or listening to it or watching the videos or, or however they're consuming the, the marketing content, then doesn't matter how great your thing is. If it can't be relatable to the people where they're at at the moment, they're not going to be able to take advantage of it. It's not that they won't look at it and maybe follow and keep track of you so that in the future they can take advantage of it. That's definitely possible. That's great. But you got to got to know where they are currently so that you can give them the right thing to move them to the next step. Right. And that segues into uh, what I believe to be a very, very important copywriting and marketing fundamental which is the ability, you slightly mentioned this, to put yourself in the shoes of your audience. The ability to stop being yourself and become that person and try to understand what they're going through, what situations they want to resolve, what problems your products and offers and services can resolve for them. Yeah. And based on that, your messaging needs to improve and get better, right? Right. So what would you say are like important, I guess, uh, practical things that people can do now in their messaging or email communications or text messaging? What are you seeing right now that's working or you are, you are seeing, you're, you get to manage a lot of communications from our side, right? And yeah. you're responsible for the lines. What will be a few gems that you can share with the audience in regards to copywriting on, on these emails and text messaging lines? Sure. One, one of the favorite things that I have, and it varies from company to company, personality to personality, but the string that binds them all together is, relationship building. When you're, you're sending out your emails or your text messages, there's got to be an element of the relationship building that's going on, whether it's um, being introduced to somebody for the first time or just kind of maintaining and, and, and as we talk about nurturing all the time. If I just write an email that says, hey, buy this cool thing, it might work depending on what they know about us, how long the people have been with us, but be conversational, maintain the relationship, and then guide them to the thing that's best for them. That's great. So, so here's a formula that, that we've applied on our content. And this is something that seriously right now I just realized mm -hmm. that it's applicable to our email and text messaging lines. I did a video on this recently. How to become a content unicorn, how to be able to spread a message, how to be able to grow a business and build a legacy. Right. Three individual steps. Number one, you got to be consistent. So again, I'm, I'm mentioning this because I, I'm, I just dawned on me that just to add to what you just said right now on the email line, it is 100% applicable to an email line. How to become consistent, which means that if you're sending one email a day, you send an email a day. As long as that message is consistent, you would eventually, like people are expecting that message every day. Yes, there's a revolving door. Yeah. People unsubscribe, people come in, it's all part of it. It's it, With the power of social media, you can keep on bringing people back into your world consistently. Example was uh, going to Grant Cardone's 10X Growth Conference this mm -hmm. last year. Grant Cardone asked, raise your hand if you have unsubscribed from my list. 30% of that audience raised their hands, which means that because of the social media power, if you do a good job of being omnipresent in social media, people keep on coming back to your list, even if you unsubscribe. Yeah. So setting up a daily message in a consistent way, it's, it's the way to go about it with your brand. Whatever your products and services are, just doing that consistently. And that's something that we do. Yep. Is, there an e is there a day that you don't send an email out to our audience? Not on purpose. Right. There, there's times that I'll drop a ball, be completely honest, and I'll... I'll you dropped the ball before? Every once in a while. We need to talk about that <laughs> in the podcast. We need to talk about that. Yeah. F fun fact, uh, once once I told Jesus he was concerned about his future in, in AGM, even after working with me for a few years, and I said, Jesus, even if you take our entire list of natural slam prospects and people that have nothing to do with the marketing ninja, and you email them about me, and you somehow, somehow massively screw up, I'm going to come and I'm going to be like, Jesus, what's going on, bro? Do you need to like take a walk? You need to do a karate <laughs> session? Something, man? Not kicking you out. Once you have your army, man, that's that's the key. Uh, army of key players that are with you to the end of the world. And then you conquer things together. You keep on growing together. And, you know, the a, a good organization, like I told you before we did our podcast, if the organization is growing, the people inside the organization should match that growth. Yep. Like, I really, really strongly believe that. I don't think an organization should be growing on its own. 
and the founders are the only ones benefiting and buying gold brick bars and storing them under under their mattress. I right. believe everybody needs to grow together with it. I just so happen to be in the position of power in the organization as a leader of the organization. But anybody that flows power to me is guaranteed to get power back from my organization, and that's just the way it is. Some people call me crazy. Some people call me that I'm too light or it doesn't really matter. That's how I feel comfortable and I can go to sleep better and I can have a better night's sleep. And that for me is enjoyment of life. So in, to that example, you know, Jesus mentioned that you'll forget about it once in a while. You know, you gotta build your team around you. Mm -hmm. You gotta build your team around you, people that you trust and that you can go to battle with and, and then you do it. But going back to the content piece that we're going, uh, talking about right now, number one is consistency, yes. right? So you gotta get that going. The email line needs to be every single day. Number two is quality. Mm -hmm. Have you seen me talk about this formula? Yep. All right, that's good. That was, a, that was a test right there. That was a test. Number two is quality of the message. Not your cameras, not your fancy green screens, not your audio, none of it is the quality of your message. Right. Is it high quality? Is it actually something that people can apply and see results with it? It doesn't matter what industry you're in. Your business solves a problem for people. Yep. If it doesn't, I don't know what kind of business you're in because every good business is gonna solve somebody else's problem. Interior designing, accounting, CPAs, taxes, uh, furniture and um, electrical and it, it, construction across the board. Yeah. Supplements and weight loss and beauty and everything solves a problem that people have. And if you're solving a problem, then you can communicate that in a way that is gonna make somebody watch that piece of content and at the end of watching that piece of content, or in this case, talking about email marketing, right? Mm -hmm. You read that message and you feel a little bit better. So that creates a routine as an audience that every single time that I get an email from Manuel Suarez, I wanna open it because there has to be something valuable there. So it gets better with time. People yep. get used to it. They expect value from you. So if you now start sending only spam and promotion and sales or whatever, you're gonna lose people along the way. Yeah. So quality is the second part of this formula and the last one is quantity. So at that point, you can set up a routine that has a massive amount of volume of quantity. And if you do that consistently, Jesus, you usually win the game of, of email marketing and, and uh, the communication to your, to your audiences, right? So far, so good. I would say that's correct. Right. <laughs> so, so Jesus. Go ahead. I was just going to say, so on that, right, so you, even with the occasional, you know, if I, if I miss something or, or the automation doesn't fire off correctly, uh, let's see, like I said, this is September 2022 at the moment. So in the month of August 2022, we sent out 600,000 plus emails last month. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And that's something that, by the way, we do measure. Yeah. I want to see those numbers of emails being sent out, yeah. increasing, increasing, increasing. So that's great. A lot, of, a lot of messages going out. It means a lot of opportunity. We you talk a lot about opportunity, a lot of opportunity for people to, to open those uh, and see them. And, you know, you never know. That's the that's the probably the unsung hero of the marketing world is you don't actually know how often you change someone's life. That's right. And once in a while, they'll say something mm -hmm. and you'll see these people in person. And they'll say like, wow, I consumed what you said and I did it and it might look at what happened to my life and look at what I did. But that's a small portion yeah. of the actual size of people that you have actually influenced and impact. Yeah. And that's a very powerful thing. It's like discussing with my friend and client the other day and one of my mentors, Jason Flatland, mm -hmm. he doesn't even know how many millionaires he's made. Right. He's only heard about the few of them that have said something to him publicly and people that give credit to him along the way. But you don't really know the impact that you're creating. Yeah. And by impacting one person, that person, for example, I got impacted by my father. I got impacted by Jason Flatland. I got impacted by Ben Cummings and these people that influenced me. I was able to now in turn impl impact a lot more people. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of my employees, but also thousands of the people in my audience have been impacted because I was impacted. So it's, it's, a, it's an effect that doesn't stop. Just, yeah. just with one particular person. It really does spread far and wide, and that's really powerful. Absolutely. This is making the world a better place. It's it, and, and that's an interesting part of it, not to, to get too deep philosophically, but uh, as I was talking about my story, I had some ups and downs. You mentioned the ups and downs. I said I didn't have a supportive wife, but people often think like, well, if something had been different before, yeah, well, if something was different before, you wouldn't be here now, and so it's always a crapshoot, as they might say. They're like, well, if I change this, where would I be? I don't know. 
but you're here now and now you get the opportunity to make a choice. That's right. So even if life has just beat you down to this point, it's actually kind of a beautiful thing because you're still here. And if you just change the way that you think about it for a second, instead of like, ah, life tears me up all the time, but you're here, which means you're already successful. You've survived. You've won that battle up to this point. So what's next? That in itself is an opportunity right there. Yeah. Just being there, ready to conquer it, take advantage. Anybody that's watching this video or listening to this podcast, you're on the right track because yeah. you're looking to make yourself better. Instead of like binge watching on Game of Thrones or something else, you're trying to make yourself better. Exactly. And that's the first step, right? You want to have a desire to be better. You want to have a desire and a wish to improve yourself. Without that desire, you can't really force anybody to be better. Right. That's powerful. Uh, Jesus, that was really deep. Um, <laughs> I appreciate. Uh, we're going to have to have another one that is more like technical about individual um, sure. strategies on email marketing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I know we're doing a lot of SMS marketing still every day. Yep. Um, you know, just to give you guys value, SMS is still opening at 90% open rates. Right. Email side, what is your open rate right now? What are you averaging? Uh, I'm averaging right now 28% open rates on our daily emails. Which is above industry average. Yep. Even to put that in perspective, January, I think we we're at 17 or 18% open rate. Right. So I've done some work on it over the last eight or nine months. That's increased that 10%. And what is that? What or is like that's some more than 10%, but gone from 18 to 28. You know, that's, that's a big deal. The yeah. industry averages are going to be 13, 17%, 20% yeah. at the most, right? right? So if you're doing 28%, you're doing something good. So what is something practical that you can give to the audience in regards to what you did to bring it up from 70 to 28% your email management? Without giving away secrets, I'll give you this one. Pay attention to the list that you have. Clean it up because sometimes people collect the contact information and they just keep sending emails and they never pay attention to who's engaging with it. And if you have a lot of emails that are just completely unengaged, but you keep sending things to them anyway, companies like Gmail and Apple and Yahoo and all that will start considering your email as no good and it will stop delivering them. So keep the list clean, find out if, if people haven't been engaging or haven't opened your stuff and whatever choice you make, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, go ahead and move them off the list. And one of the things that we do is we'll take that list of people who are no longer engaged through email, and then we'll add it to custom audiences, either on Facebook or YouTube and Google. Correct. And we try to reach out to them there to get them to come back through a different channel and get re-engaged. That's a hot tip right there. So it doesn't mean that that's the end of the relationship with these people. It just means that that is the end of that particular stage right there. Right. And if you keep on trying to get them to open up their emails, even though they're for, they haven't opened up an email in 90 days or 180 days, you're going to just basically affect the algorithm and the system and they're going to penalize you. Right. So instead of doing that, what you do is that you create a tag of unengaged people right. and say something like 90 days unengaged, stop sending your email communication to these people. Yep. Take that list, upload it on Facebook and Instagram on the business manager, which they call the Meta Business Manager now. Fancy, fancy name, <laughs> and uh, and then put another message in front of them. Send some video content, send some content to them, and try to bring them back into your list again and reactivate that relationship. It's not an end yeah. of the relationship; no. it is a new phase on that journey. Right. And many times, people will come back from to you and and keep on purchasing things from you or engaging with you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. So, that's absolute fire. Uh, I appreciate you being here on the show again, Jesus. Absolutely. And uh, you've actually been on the show before. Yeah. It's, it's been a, a while. and a half or so. Yeah. Uh, we had Maybe a different studio. We had a different studio, different setup and all of it. But this is we talked about copywriting also back then. Mm -hmm. This was a little deep, emotional, and powerful. But yeah. again, you cannot overestimate the importance of a mindset to take anybody from where they are at to any other level. It doesn't matter whether you are part of an organization and you want to get better at it, like you, yourself. Like We just talked about your journey, how much you've improved in the last three years, how much you've grown since you come came yeah. over here for the first time. Personally, financially, professionally, it's been incredible to see you yeah. grow over the years. Whether you want to grow at the individual level in an organization or as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, the mindset is the senior to everything else. And, and let me, I know we're trying to wrap up, so let me fire off one more thing. And then you can close this out if that's what you'd like is that that ending of moving from the truck driving into 
being employed here with AGM it took about four days, right? So people think about, you know, I got to change jobs. It's a huge pain, all this different trouble. But again, preparation, opportunity equals luck. It was a, I'm pretty sure it was a Thursday afternoon when I first was in contact with AGM. Uh, Tuesday morning, I was officially hired. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You got prepared for the opportunity and you took advantage of it. And we got lucky. We were prepared to receive you also. There you go. So we have flown power to each other on both sides. <laughs> it's been great to watch. I think when Jesus started with us three years ago, we were an organization of maybe 25, 30 people. Sounds about right. We're about 112 now. So it's been quite a journey. And also, I wish we could have some of the B-roll from your earlier office <laughs> full of cables and boxes yeah. to where we are at today. It's been it's been quite a journey also for AGM along the way. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks okay. for tuning in for the podcast. Thanks for being here. And I um, hope that you enjoyed it. And if you got some value from it, please share, comment, engage, subscribe if you're on YouTube channel. And if you're on the podcast, please write a review and let us know your thoughts. These podcast sessions are becoming quite incredible. And I can tell you, they are spiritual experiences for me in itself. And it's all about being uplifted and getting into action and executing from, from these knowledge, full of knowledge sessions. All right. Absolutely. Jesus, thanks for having us here. Thanks for being here. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of the Social Marketing Hour.